Vivekananda, Paramahamsa Yogananda, Swami Chinmayananda, and so on. There was no question of Bhagawan even leaving Arunachala, even on come to America. And of course, Bhagawan did not institute a monastic succession order. He, as the Guru, is present always. So Arunachala Ashrama was founded by a man who defies expectations. Not only in that he was not a sannyasi, he was a householder, yes. But also, he was not the sort of uh, majestic personality who would go into another country and found another institution. In fact, those of us who knew him, he was a very rustic man to the core, from one of the most rural parts of Bihar in India. He was hardly the kind of personality that you would, you would find. But what he really had was boundless devotion to Bhagavan and, and a lot of Bhagavan's grace. And all it took was a simple suggestion from Arthur Osborne in India during one of his trips for him to come and start uh, a satsang, if you will, here in America. And you can see the sort of unobtrusive way of Bhagavan in the growth of the ashram also. Um, it started off very simply in renting some rooms somewhere in Manhattan. Started with the, it started on November 12, 1965. That's how old uh, the organization is. At the American Buddhist Society, renting a room. They were renting rooms for a few years. They were renting a storefront for almost 17 years, I think, before moving on to small houses and then eventually to this current location about 18 years ago. But if you look at this map, there was never a moment uh, where there were fundraisers, for example. It was never done and it will never be done. Bhagavan will provide whatever is needed and whenever it is needed. That is how the ashram has been all this time. And I think in some ways it mirrors the growth of Ramanashram itself. From Bhagavan being in Patalingam and Gurumurtam and Virupaksha and Skandashram and so on to the present location. And of course we are gathered all here to celebrate the centenary of that great uh, event of uh, you know, founding the ashram. Bhagavan also ensured that the ashram is run in a manner that is befitting to Bhagavan. It is meant to be a place where sincere spiritual aspirants can come and deepen their practice in the light of Bhagavan's teachings. It is not in general except for occasions like this it is, we generally do not have cultural programs or lectures. The focus is practice. Arunachala Abhyasa Ashram, Bhagavatam That is what is meant. And Bhagavan himself is the teacher there. That we don't have other teachers. Bhagavan himself is the permanent presence and teacher. And Bhagavat would call himself a doorman and a doormat. That's what he would say he was. <coughs> A lot of the ashrams growth over the decades also owes to our second president, uh, Sri Dennis Arthur. And I think those of you here who know him will readily agree with me when I say it was one of Bhagawan's, he was, he is one of Bhagawan's special blessings to us. There is, there is a small video that I think will be played during lunch, so those of you who do not know him, you can see him walking through the ashram and talking about Bhagawan and the teachings and so on. A few years ago, he retired to solitude, somewhere, an undisclosed location, somewhere in America. But for 48 years, he dedicated his life to the ashram. And if one thing you could see in him during these 48 years is a sincere and total dedication to Sadhana. Not for a single day did he miss waking up at 4.30 a.m. for the sadhana as an example to us. I think personally think he was up even earlier. But not for a single day could he see him. That was the best example he said to us. So he was all about that inner life. But if you look at his outer life also, it was all about serving Bhagavan and his devotees. He really had nothing else going on. That complete dedication is all is a great thing. And I think, once again, I think we should all thank Bhagavan from the bottom of our hearts for the gift of his company and his friendship that we all had for many, many years. And then finally, 
when Dennis left, he left the ashrama under the care and guidance of our current president, Mohan Rao Swami. Dennis Dennis used to say that the most important thing you need to manage the ashrama is an attitude of selfless service. And I think that's what we find in him. I don't know how many of you know, but Mohan has been, uh, every Saturday morning, he goes to do feeding the homeless people. And he's done that without, I would say, without missing probably any weekends for decades, not just here every now and then. So, in the way to me, To me, I sort of remember of how HMR would make food every regularly for Bhagawan, she would never want to miss it. So this is his way of serving, serving the homeless, serving the needy, right? So if you think about these three leaders that the Ashama has had so far, to me, three values stand out. Humble devotion, sincere and total dedication to sadhana, and selfless service. And I like to think that these are the values by which we all, that Allah's Ashrama stands for. And these are the values that we all should try to uphold as well. Dennis's tapasya has also resulted in a lovely shrine that is very palpable with the presence of Allah. That is a great help to all of us in our sadhana as well here in Europe. So I will close with a few words of Bhagavad again. Remember, a villager, the village had no electricity, no school, and oddly for India, I believe, no temple either. Very, very, that remote is how it was. So he said this not in his last days, but apparently 25 years before he passed away. Who knows? This body may go any day. What do I have to show for all these years? What will I leave behind? Have I stopped loving, serving, and worshipping all of you? Every day I question myself thus. And that is what I want you to remember when this body was. Great words for all of us. Thank you.